You're in the Business Insurance Zone with me, Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and contributor to Backroom Technician. This week on The Biz is our Truth in Taxation series. And on today's show, Taxation with Representation with National Columnist, Certified Financial Planner, and CPA, Ken Davis. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use. Well, welcome everyone to the Business Insurance Zone. I'm your host, Steve Savant. And today we're talking about our series, Truth in Taxation. And with us today, CLU, CHFC, CFP, and CPA, and a friend that I've had for almost 25 years, Ken Davis. Hey, hey Ken. Stephen, good to see you. Talk about Truth in Taxation. I remember the old mantra when I was learning the American Revolution, when I was a small child, they always said, the reason why we went to war with Britain was because we didn't have representation. They were just taxing us without any, but they'd been asking us and put, putting on us onerous at that time, especially taxation, tariffs. There were all th kind of things going on. Now we're talking about, we do have representation. We do. And we have people representing us in the House and in the Senate and, of course, the president himself. But I'm not sure we have the truth in representation any longer because we're represented, but I don't even know if our representatives know what we're paying. Well, that's my biggest concern as I was considering this whole thing. You know, we have elected officials that go up there and, and they make votes and stuff. I, I looked up on the internet, and I love the internet, and found out that we have 72,000 pages of Internal Revenue Code, Treasury regulations that interpret the Internal Revenue Code, revenue rulings, and I don't want to bore with all the other different mm -hmm. names for all the different kinds of regulations that wrap around. That doesn't count court cases, books that are written on taxation, interpreting the text. There's just thousands and thousands of pages. How in the world can any one congressman, senator, know what the tax code says? And if that's true, mm -hmm. how can they truly represent us if they don't understand what mm -hmm. the tax law does and says? Well, I guess it would be worse if they actually do know what it says and they're not fully disclosing to the American people. What are we actually paying? Because this whole series this week is truth and taxation. Last week, we introduced everybody into 1040. It's all tax season. This, it is this week as well. But I don't know if we all know all in what we're paying, whether it's federal, state, sales tax, this tax, gas tax. I mean, we're talking about, I just heard on the news that they wanted to go ahead and figure out, okay, we're going to start repairing highways and bridges. I thought that was the gas tax. Yeah. I thought that's what the taxes yeah. were for. Yeah. Now we're talking about, no, that's not enough or whatever the issues are. Now, I'm just looking at it before we get into it. We're almost at $17 trillion in debt right now. If you look at those numbers, and this is after they've kind of incorporated the sequester cuts, you know, which I think was like, what, 2% of it was, it wasn't even th anything big. And they were crying that that was too much. And that the world was going to fall apart. Yeah, the world so, well, hasn't fallen apart. I'm looking apart. at Y2K2000 only in taxation terms, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm looking at this and now they're telling me I'm almost at 150,000. If you're a taxpayer in, this, in the United States, which is only 53% of us left, Think about that. Of all the Americans that are actually having to pay federal tax, our bill on this is about 150000 right now. Well, you brought up an interesting thing. It, it, the question is, is the tax law so complex just because it's evolved that way? Or are, are, are politicians trying to hide behind the vagueness of the law, the, the incredible mm -hmm. complexity of the law? And it's clear to me as I start to look at the structure mm -hmm. of the law that we have a system where Politicians get elected by giving out goodies. Goodies mm -hmm. to poor people, to middle class, to corporations, to special interest groups. It's they stand up with this big mm -hmm. pot of money and hand it all out. And, but then they get to pay for it. Mm -hmm. And it used to be that we raised tax rates or we lowered tax rates. And it was pretty simple. In the, in the news, we could say, Congress raised tax rates today. Mm -hmm. Well, now we look at our tax rates and they almost become meaningless because what happens is deductions, exemptions, and credits are phased out if you make certain amounts of income. Your Medicare premiums go up, and those aren't even quote-unquote taxes, but they go up based on your mm -hmm. income. And we're going to be talking about that a little bit later. There's all these different elements that start getting added on and nickeling and diming. And so the tax rate really isn't what people are paying. In many cases, they're paying much more uh, because of these other aspects of the tax law. And that's what's got me concerned, is they're trying to pay for this massive debt. They're mm -hmm. trying to raise taxes, and they don't want to tell us they're raising taxes. So they find new ways to raise taxes so that's so darn hard to talk about in the press 
Nobody really mm -hmm. understands what's going on. That is not representation. Well, when you look at the stealth taxes that are embedded in this complex code, I mean, it's gone convoluted. I mean, really, when you think about it, it is so hard to read this, and the nuances of the code are so managed at such a, I would call it micromanage. I mean, when you think about the language, you have to be a superior accountant to understand what is exactly going on. And I can understand why Steve Forbes, what, 10, 15 years ago was crying for a flat tax. Make this easy. When I'm looking at these numbers, Ken, I'm looking at four years out, you know, I'm just saying, you know, it's probably going to be President Hil Hillary Clinton unless somebody else intervenes. That's the new mantra now. And yeah. we're going to be sitting at around $22 trillion if we stay constant the way we are now. And by the way, that's the U.S. debt clock. I noticed that the GOP and, of course, the CBO, they have different numbers. But generally, the U.S. debt clock seems to have been more accurate or at least really took take taking into account everything that's going on. And at $22 trillion, that's a lot of money. We're talking about six, almost 17 right now. So at $22 trillion, the percent of GDP that our debt is, is just huge. Well, somewhat cynically, when I see road signs that says your tax dollars at work, uh -huh. I, I, say to my, I say to my friends, uh, the Saudis' uh, dollars at work, because mm -hmm. we're borrowing from the rest of the world to pay for the things we're using. So it's our tax dollars and borrowings, and the last time I looked, a third of our, our uh, uh, budget was borrowed each year. I mean, we can't continue with that on. We are going to have to raise revenues. There's two ways to do that. Raise taxes, which frequently mm -hmm. fails because people find ways around it, or grow the economy so we have a bigger pie so that we can have more taxes just from the growth mm -hmm. of the economy. Well, when I think about it, even my friends are sending me other nations debt to comfort me. No comfort there. <laughs> we'll be back from the break. We're going to address the self taxes hidden in the complexity of the code, part of our Truth in Taxation series with Ken Davis. And don't forget to enroll in IULUniversity.com for the best training, education, and sales support when it comes to life insurance for retirement. You're income. listening to the insurance industry's number one resource for products, planning ideas, carrier information, and interviews you can use. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use. Hello everyone, I'm Steve Savant, host of the daily internet talk show, The Business Insurance Zone. I've been using Backup Technician for over 20 years for my edutainment workshops, public seminars, and my ultimate resource for my consumer shows. Why? Because it's the best needs analysis and sales support material that addresses almost every financial planning scenario. And now you can test drive Backroom Technician absolutely free for the next 30 days. Go to thebiz.tv and click on the BizBlog menu and sign up for the most powerful resource available to financial advisors. Well, welcome back to the Business Insurance Zone. I'm Steve Savant with Ken Davis. And remember, you can order today's material at thebiz.tv. And while you're out there, Click on the Backroom Technician icon for your free 30-day free trial offer for access to the best needs analysis and client education materials that address almost every aspect of financial planning. And of course, Steve, your host, is a contributor to that. And before moving forward with anything that you hear on our show, always make sure you check in with your tax consultant and or your broker-dealer compliance officer if you're FINRA licensed. We're addressing the stealth taxes hidden in the complexity of the law, part of our Truth in Taxation series with Ken Davis. And Ken, before we, I let you loose, and I know you want to go on this, just remember, people are sending me saying, Steve, my liberal friends, are sending me, <laughs> Steve, you're, look at our, our nation isn't anywhere near as bad as the other nations. Somehow, this does not bring comfort to me, okay? But here's the real issue. I've looked at the top five, and if you go out to truthinaccounting.org, you will see our total obligation. We're just talking about debt. Our total debt and obligations, complete pensions, all these things that the government's into, is at 72, almost $73 trillion. When I'm looking at it, if you're going to move to any state and you're doing it for taxes, Alaska's the king. I mean, if you want to know what it's like having 21000 per taxpayer in the black. I love wow. that. Wow. So if you're looking at, I want to move there, Steve, what are our top five states that are really doing a job? Alaska, in this order, Wyoming. North Dakota, Utah, and Nebraska. And the five states, if you're in these five states, it's time to look at relocation. Number, th you know, and I'm just gonna go from number five, Kentucky, Illinois, number four, number three, Hawaii, number two, New Jersey, and number one, and I was surprised because I, I thought Massachusetts would be number one, Connecticut. Mm. Now, so think about this. We're talking about our states in the union. I just gave you the top five that are doing a good job and the top below five, the, the bottom 
45 or 46 through 50 that are doing really not a very good job. And if you're in Connecticut, your tax bill is 49,000 per resident of that state. And on top of that, remember, I still have another 150 grand that you owe on federal if you're, gonna, if you're a payer, if you're a taxpayer. So I just want you to get this whole idea of what the burden really is. And you know, you talk about these convoluted laws, the sunset, when the sunset laws, you know, when that went away, did it really go away? Well, you know, I got to thinking about why would Congress do sunsets? In fact, it was a Republican Congress that was in place fighting with the Democrats uh, that actually started to put George Bush's laws and put a sunset on it as some sort of compromise. And, you know, it was actually a bipartisan effort. Neither one of the parties wanted to admit at how massive our debt was and how it was growing. Think about it, if you have a sunset law and they do tax projections, the law sunsets after a year, they can say, oh, the tax break goes away after a year, therefore we're gonna raise more tax revenues, therefore our budgets are gonna be lower and our deficit doesn't look as bad. So I'm thinking, okay, that's the game that's being played here, is you put sunset provisions in so that when you do your budget projections, they don't look quite as bad. They look massively awful already and, and just add the, those features back mm -hmm. onto it. It's, it's amazing. So th that's another way that they're not being truthful with us. Mm -hmm. They're finding ways to hide the fact that deficits are actually even worse than we think they are. Well, I have, when I'm looking at how you say it's worse than we think we are, I mean, I'm already looking at, you know, online Google at Truth in Accounting and the U.S. debt clock. That looks that looks catastrophic. Well, I'm just talking about the future budgets mm -hmm. that they're planning to make it worse. Mm -hmm. They're not planning to make it better. They're planning to make it worse, and they're hiding that it's even worse than it is. Of course, in the business insurance film, this is all going to be huge for tax-deferred and tax-free uh, items like life insurance and annuities. We'll get to that at the end of the week. But, but when you think about these sunset laws, though, is this a stealth tax in disguise? Well, yeah, it is. And, and the thing is, it, it creates a lot of problems as business people and as individuals. We have to have some sense of the law. We're, we are a nation of laws. We have to know w how we're governed up front so that we can behave appropriately. Well, mm -hmm. with taxes, if they're constantly changing or they're waiting to the very last minute, like the alternative minimum tax, each year the game is at sunsets, at sunsets, at sunsets and they keep extending the higher exemption so that it doesn't hit the middle class. Mm -hmm. Well, the fact is that we don't know. We, we assume that it's gonna get done by the end of the year, but we don't know that. So people are sitting there going, gosh, am I gonna be taxed or am I not gonna be mm -hmm. taxed? And if I make this decision, should I go ahead with it? I shouldn't. Government's created laws that actually tries to influence, influence and influences mm -hmm. us to take action certain directions to create jobs, to help with education, mm -hmm. help with, with medical things. But they move the laws around so fast we can't really, we, we can't be influenced by them mm -hmm. because they change too often. Well, when I think about what's going on now, and what is the, I mean, we have, when, when Steve Forbes came out, and this is certainly not a PR for, for Steve, but when Steve came out with a flat tax, this was going to not only make it simple and easy to understand, but it was going to take the compliance cost out of this. Ken, walk me through this because I'm looking at staggering numbers just to comply with the law. What does it cost? with our convoluted IRS code online to keep this compliant? Well, I did a little research, and who knows if the studies are accurate or not. Everybody mm. plays with numbers. But one of the numbers I saw was astounding, and they claim to be very conservative. They say that it costs $431 billion per year to comply with the law. The accountants, the attorneys, the tax law, the audits, the preparation of information for the tax return, just by the taxpayer themselves, then the, then the advisors, then doing the tax returns. You know, this, this wide variety of effort mm -hmm. just to comply with the law cost 30 cents of every dollar we spend in taxes. 30 cents is what it costs to comply. So it's 1.3 times whatever we're paying in cost. And that's already embedded in some, I mean, who knew that, right? Yeah. You're just digging up and uncovering things that have been buried and we're paying these costs. I mean, think about it. This is where we have to look at truth in taxation. Remember, you can watch this show and all our shows this week by going out to our website at thebiz.tv. And you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and Google+. Well, that's the buzz on the biz for today. You've been in the zone, the business insurance zone. You're listening to the insurance industry's number one resource for products, planning ideas, carrier information, and interviews you can use. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, 
disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use. 